Hey, how are you guys? Uh, quick, uh, quick video. Um, just some little tidbits that uh, are interesting, I think. Um, so I've been really sick. What, Ten days ago, I got a flu, and I got over it. But then the weather was so bad and rainy and snowy that I ended up getting it again. And this time, it really knocked me out like I wasn't ready. So it's been about ten days. I've just been really under the weather, and it's gotten a little bit better. Like I'm on the upswing now. But, but five, six days into it, I was so sick and feeling so physically unwell that what happened was I became a miserable piece of shit fucker. I was just so depressed and acting out and just, it was actually, it was more about depression. I was just whiny. I, all, my, my work, my job, my, my life, everything was just looking depressing and I recorded a couple of videos which I thank God stopped I didn't upload them and uh, I was just a really unappetizing character to be around and it was really all because I was sick it wasn't even a mental it wasn't even something that happened in my life and uh, so like then when I felt better yesterday I started to smile again because I feel it passing although it's passing slowly I watched the video and I'm like wow what a whiny little bitch I can be like holy moly there I am like there is my disorder you know for all to see if I ever want to show it I was just whining about everything and I didn't know what I was going to do and I was like a baby and then I realized wait a second every time in my life up until I was 45 years old that I was feeling good and my life was strong my mother the narcissist would sabotage me in some way, whether it was my job, my girlfriend, my friends, my living arrangements, um, or just my peace of mind. I mean, you know, if my mother, I remember one time I wouldn't let her get to me, so she started to call me every day and tell me I should get my driver's license back. I'm like, Mom, I don't need my driver's license. I'm fine without it. I've never missed it since I gave it up when I was 28. I don't want it. I think he should, and she would just call me again and again and again just to drive me crazy. And eventually she would elicit that whiny, miserable, crying bitch that I saw in my video of myself a couple of days ago when I was sick. It's the exact same, same reaction, which gets me to think my mother was absolutely demented. To want to see that in her child over and over again as much as she can, it's like she missed that in me. Now I see it. She would miss it. Um, Another thing that I remembered about her is like, I had tinnitus in my ears. I'm going to make a video about that for people who are suffering. But anyway, I had it for about a year and it was making me suicidal. It was loud ringing in my ear 24 seven. So I hit YouTube and I hit the books and I hit all the studies and I figured out what it was all about. And I slowly got rid of my tinnitus. Well, I was so happy. But when I told my mother how happy I was to be relieved that I can live again, she started to throw things at me like, it was going to go away anyways. You know, there's nothing you did that made it go away. You know, Uncle uh, Nathan said it was just going to... All this bullshit, because I know people who have tinnitus for 10 years and they're still miserable. And I know what kind of work I put into it and exactly what triggers it, because now if I want to bring it back, I can do it. I know what I have to do. Um, incidentally, it's about food. It's about intake. It's about certain chemicals. Uh, Especially, I'll just tell you right away, it's especially nitrates and, um, what do you call it, preservatives. Preservatives, and they build up in our system, and for some reason they, 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 they make the glutamate shoot through your ear. I had figured it out. Anyways, I just don't eat a lot of preservatives. And, um, and certain foods, like certain grains, there are certain things that really trigger the gut, and the gut triggers the ear. But beyond that, my mother was just, what a sick woman. And my mother lost her sense of taste, her sense of smell. Too much cocaine. She, she didn't tell me why she lost it, but now I know. So she lost her sense of, uh, of smell. And along with that, she said her, she lost her, her sense of taste. I went crazy trying to help her at the time. She didn't even want to hear about it. She was like, ah, whatever, I'll live with it. But every time I would see her, she would be complaining. And she can't taste anything. And now I realize it's like she was just lazy. She just didn't want to work on anything you know she didn't want to work on the family you don't want to work on the on the on a, on a new marriage she stuck with that arrangement she made when she was like 22 years old that dragged her through the mud her whole life she never wanted to work with my brother and i and anything we were doing like she was really just a 
a care grid giver when I was when I was a young boy. You know, that's about it. Um, and she was there for me when I was, you know, to screw me up and to get the whiny bitch boy back and then to give me some money to, to shut me up. But that was when I realized, my God, she has to be a lot sicker than my father. My father was, was lustful, right? He was a predator. Um, psychopath, I got a good description. Psychopath, predator, sociopath, schemer. Narcissist, dismissive. Everything, you know, nothing, you know, everything is them, nothing really, and I, and I, and I see that, my brother, narcissist, everything was like below him. There could be a comedian on stage, you know, making $10 million per show, but my brother's putting him down, you know what I mean? Like, give me a break, I used to tell him, come on, you can't, you have to look for what he's doing, that's right. Anyhow, and my, my mother, she's not a predator, necessarily, except me, I guess, which was more of a schemer, her whole life, I remember now, looking back, it was all schemes and scams, and my father... He can't scam. I don't think, a, 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 in my definition, a psychopath and a sociopath, in this definition, which I heard from Les, I forget his second name, he's Dr. Les something on the internet. Um, and I thought it really hit, hit home because I had a problem with my father as, a, as the same thing as my mother because my father was really bad at scamming or scheming. He was just a good predator towards young boys or to hurt me or, to, or he, he can he can go after someone basically uh, to make sales he was good at it because that's, a, that's a, a shark mentality but he couldn't come up with a grand scheme manipulation you know like there's just no way uh, that's the sociopathic mind that I think has at least a little bit of their grounding my, my father just like go 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 you know go like on the attack and that's how I've always seen psychopaths they just don't have danger fears so they just go for it. A schemer, that's a sociopath because they have all those fears and they have all those concerns. So they've got a scheme. But anyhow, how did I get off my, my topic? I, I lost it. My mom, so my mom is just is just sick, I realize now. And I'm just, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, something else that I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about. This will be it because I had three points, but one is not as important. Uh, I started to look at some um, transformational videos, and it's funny because I hit one from Abdul Saad, uh, Vital Mind Psychology, and he spoke about the three negative emotions that form the pillar, uh, you know, of, of of resentment or whatever the pillar that keeps us back from from transforming because I've I felt like I've recovered a lot and I've absorbed P, the PTSD shock and trauma but I haven't transformed into what I expected I was going to I'm kind of like in this middle zone so uh, so he said you know there's three emotions and you have to think about how these emotions work in your life and when I heard the three emotions it didn't take me very long because I talked to you about them all the time <laughs> basically it's he said how do the three emotions uh, fear, shame, and anger. Now, I'm not talking to you guys about fear. That's all I talk about is how I'm scared. And, and he talks about the fear of going back into the chaos. It's not fear of an animal or fear of a dog or fear of women. It's fear of the unknown. And I've been talking to you guys that about for two years. Since I've gotten in this situation, I've been like, whoa, I'm not really ready to embark. Like, I'm scared. I'm scared of getting snapped by another stupid corporation, wasting my time and energies and I'm just you know and it is, it's a fear and um, so that fear then keeps me in my present situation which I'm okay with until a few times in the past six months I've seen women who I'm like my god if I didn't have if I had a life if I had a real income a real job or something that I can be proud of that's where the shame came in that I would have, I would have approached them. I would have thrown all of my fear of women, you know, to the wayside because I think there was like two of them. Yeah, there's two of them. You know, I look at hundreds of women a day, if not a thousand. Only two of them. I was like, uh, you know, they just, they just did it for me. And I would have, I basically would have love bombed them until like, until either they, you know, they threatened to call the police or I got them. And unfortunately, that's been my way. You know. I, and that's probably a good thing there maybe that, I, that I'm in this situation where I had the shame that I didn't approach them because if I had my computer programming job I would have walked right up to them and said hey what's your name 
you know, because I you have all the money, you have all the. I don't know how guys with jobs can't get girls. I mean, just hit a million girls. Hey, what's up? And if you have all the resources in your pocket to take them around, well, they'll get to know you. And if they like you, you know, then <laughs> anyways. So then there's, so that's the shame part, right? So my fear of doing something that isn't completely independent is then giving me shame because this completely independent job only makes me enough money for one person. And then from that, I get angry. And why do I get angry? Because of my childhood abuse and my parents. That's where my anger stems from. And that's why I've been walking around lately really angry because I used to not have a reason. I didn't know why I was angry. So my anger wasn't as pronounced. But now, I, now that I've been thinking about it since watching that video, it's this pattern of like, okay, I'm afraid to get out of this very cozy, comfortable, situation that works quite well for me but does not work at all for more than me and that gives me shame that keeps me from maybe going for a certain women that may bring me happiness and then I get angry at myself for being in this situation not in my selfish I get angry at, at being born in, born into two fucking psychopaths who who played me for, for 45 years. And I get angry at my brother for not being on it. I, I, that, I get angry, and that's when I go back to the past. So it's this online, it's this online, it's this, it's this cycle. So anyways, I'm gonna end the video by saying that at this summer right now, I'm, 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 I'm confronting the fear. It's not very hard. I've been waiting a little bit until it was the summer when I can have the freedom to confront my fear because, you know, I, I can't really get hurt in the summer. I can be on the street, I can, Every, everything is fun when it's nice outside even if it's torture <laughs> so um, yeah so so we'll see how it goes now because uh, I'm going to confront that fear and just you know burst right through it uh, I've started actually so let's see how this happens and uh, I guess I'll talk about one last thing that I thought was very interesting if you guys are still watching uh, I told you guys I have ADHD and this job that I run around collecting aluminum cans and bottles is great for me because it's like a video game well, I'm watching some videos on ADHD uh, and getting things done, like projects that that you know you want to do, but they're long-term benefit. Like you're only going to get the the payoff in the long term. So some with ADHD, like me, we want a short-term fix. We like the you know if it's if there's novelty, it's like singing and dancing. There's an immediate reaction for me. I can learn right away and see how I look in the mirror or report it. I love that. Like that's why I'm been doing that way too many hours in the past three years. But, so you know what they say? They say you should turn every project or every, you should turn your workflow into a game. And that's how you'll like your work and get projects done. I'm like, isn't that funny? I, I've already told you guys that the reason I like this job is because it's like a game. And then these guys give me the advice, it was psychiatrist gives you the advice, well, whatever you do, break it up into some kind of chunks or whatever, just structure it like a game and your mind will, will, will learn to like it. And already I'm thinking, you know, I, I used to think about my book as three different um, mini novels, and that was more like a game, right? One, two, three, it's like, and I was much more motivated. It's when I pulled back and I started to think, you know, I wanna write my whole big epic piece that it started to look like, oh, way too much. Every time I would start it, I'm like, my God, I'm only 20 pages in, this thing is gonna be like four or 500 pages, I have so much to say. When I, now, when I think about it, wait a sec, I'm writing three novels of 100, 150 pages a piece, it already seems so much easier. So uh, we'll see how all that goes. And uh, last but not least, I asked Todd Grande uh, if he can make a video on whether he thinks people talking about their uh, their childhood abuse and their ongoing recovery or their problems, you know, in life, is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm curious to hear what a professional says. I've never heard a a, a licensed, uh, you know, scientifically informed doctor. Uh, give us the uh, give us the lowdown. Maybe he's going to tell me this is the worst thing I could have done for myself, and I would have been uh, recovered, you know, two and a half years ago had I just kept it to myself. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see. Um, let's have a great summer, guys. Uh, whoever's there, still suffering with your with your narcissist. Break free, man. Break free. It's I I forgave my mother of uh, last week. I called her. 
at five in the morning, our answering machine. I just quickly said, I just want you to know that uh, you're forgiven. I actually said, I don't want to wake up one day and find out you're dead and I didn't forgive you and live with it. So you know what? I understand your, your intellect was not the way it was. It was different times, different era. You're forgiven. And I hung up. So that was to, uh, to end that and hopefully move forward now because it's been exactly three years that I have no contact in two weeks. And three years is what I thought it would take minimal. I mean, after 45 years of complete gaslighting, I mean, I, I didn't even know what the hell was going on my own family. I had no idea who my parents were. I just, my brother died and I'm not even sure who he was at this point.